In today's episode of Drift Trike Madness, we're gonna add headlight, taillights, blinkers, everything to make it as street legal as possible, and also a front brake so we can do mad burnouts. Of course, we got cooling fans to mount on the radiator, so while I'm running wires, I'll run that. And then, we'll see, I haven't even looked at this one yet. It looked really cool on eBay. Um, we'll see what it looks like in person. This is a big old fat LED headlight, and it's exactly as awesome as I hoped. Look at that. That is sick. That looks nice and like, you know, kind of cyber punky, futuristic, ridiculous. In the interest of saving some time, I just got some of these universal brackets because they are super cheap that just clamp onto your fork tubes. If they don't work, we'll save them for something else in the future, but I figured it was uh, an easy 10 bucks to save myself, you know, an hour or two of building stuff. So something like that. brackets did end up working out. I just kind of stretched them around the fork tubes. Just got to trim these bolts off a little bit. And then I cut them a little shorter to tuck the headlight in. And uh, I think that looks pretty good for a $30 headlight and some $10 brackets. So I have it wired such that when you turn the key on, the orange halo comes on. We've got a handlebar switch here that I stole from my own dirt bike. Or three position off, low, high, and it's got this thing, which is a kill switch. We'll use that for a horn. So we've got low beam and high beam. The light suits it so well. It I makes think. the front end yeah. look more complete on its own. Oh yeah, since there's for no sure. bars there. Yeah. Yeah. Operation Street Legal Trike is coming along nicely. Got these uh, light pods mounted back here and also got the uh, correct ones ordered that are red and red instead of red and white. I have it wired so that when you turn the key on, you got tail lights. And then of course I'll wire in a brake light switch. I already have the wires there, just have to put the switch on. And obviously mounted the cooling fans, got those wired up with a relay you know, as it should be. I even got the alternator wired in. So I just did some quick Googling and uh, wired it how it should be wired. Um, there's an extra wire here that isn't used, isn't really needed. It's just like for an idiot light that tells you if your alternator is not working. So alternator is charging the batteries. So that's good. Um, right now we have Bluetooth front brakes. <laughs> AKA we don't have a, uh, brake line yet. So it's SEMA ready. Oh yeah, it's SEMA ready, exactly. <laughs> Just a few more little odds and ends and it should be like essentially street legal. So one of you guys commented that you wanted to hear the rotary trike really rev out. So I came out, told Ethan, held it down for a while at red line and uh, now it's kind of medium seized, huh? Yeah. So, um, it's not 100% seized. I can turn it over, but it is very stiff. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we didn't do it any favors. It's not like uh, out of oil or anything, but I'm gonna top it off to make it a little happier, you know, if we get it running again. These guys that make this stuff, this Tribotech stuff, came up the other day to hang out and they left us with some product and it's uh, it's supposed to like be an anti-wear thing for your engine. Sticky on one side, slippery on the other side at yep. a molecular level. And so I injected some right in through the spark plug holes and I've been turning it over. Um, I'm gonna keep doing that a little bit more and then uh, turn it over with the starter once it's free moving enough for that, hopefully. And then if we can get it started up, we'll see if it comes back to life. 
and uh, I've got my foot on the choke. I found a way to do this all with just, you know, my appendages. <laughs> so we'll see. Right there. Yep. I mean, <laughs> it turned over a few times. It it sputtered. Oh, <laughs> it did sputter. There's some smoke. Man, we just need it to turn over just a little bit longer. Probably here. Bump starting in the truck up the road. Now that totally works. I like that lopey idle. Does it feel like it's messed up or is it normal? Uh, I mean, it's not running uh, quite as good as it was before, but it never ran perfect anyway. Like it was always a little crackly on the top or the top end and stuff. So I really don't know. Something that the camera can't really show as well because it's not next to it. It runs a lot better under load than it does free revving. I'm gonna steal these fork protectors and fender off of here because this is the same type of setup. And obviously this fender looks like trash the way it is, but I'm thinking maybe if we chop it down aggressively, it might look nice uh, as long as it clears. So anyway, the idea is throw all this stuff on the trike. came out pretty good for a uh, ugly plastic CRF 450 fender. I think uh, it looks kind of Mad Max, weird chopper dirt bike vibes, which is exactly what it is. I do think it needs some rear fenders to match now, so we'll probably have to do that, but uh, it looks pretty good. We're about to get this thing started again and do some mad burnouts. Uh, but first, I gotta show you something super awesome because this video is sponsored by The Ridge. They make super cool wallets, very minimal, compact, lightweight wallets, super easy to get your cards in and out of, unlike a normal wallet. And other wallets are just so bulky and annoying. These are so thin. These things are awesome, and they have all sorts of different, like, this one's got, like, topo maps on it. This one's, like, burnt titanium. Yeah, the materials are military grade materials. Um, they have a lifetime warranty, which is pretty dang cool for a wallet. Never thought I'd see a, a wallet with a lifetime warranty, but um, the Ridge also makes super sweet backpacks, which is great for us because this weatherproof pack is gonna be perfect for, uh, you know, winter snow bike adventures and such. All quilted and nice. Man, that's like, I wanna like sleep in there. That's cozy. 
<laughs> for the uh, good old grind hard editing laptop. So the Ridge Wallet also has RFID blocking technology to protect you from digital pickpocketers. So you can get 10% off right now with our code GHPC and there's a link in the description. So get yourself a sweet new indestructible protecting your digital identity wallet. Time to try and start it. If it won't start on its own, then we'll just roll start it again with the truck, toe start it, um, and do some burnouts. It's way less smoky down here. I squatted down to get that shot. There's a reason they say stop, drop, and roll. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> man, I want to go racing on these stickies right now, man. This sticky, sticky. Also, this just like heated up the shop. I was chilling a minute ago. Nah, I know. It's like a good warmer in here. <laughs> Woo -hoo. So, what's next for Drift Trike then? Uh, well, an engine rebuild, which was imminent anyway. I mean, like, everyone is gonna say that we're stupid and we do burnouts and blow up our engines, which is true, but it needed to be rebuilt already. Like, we just assembled it as a box of parts and it ran okay, but, um, you know, it needs some fresh stuff. And we needed to tear it down anyway. So, tear it down, uh, weld the frame, paint the frame, uh, probably repaint the engine. That crusty orange is, you know, was great for a while, but it's not really deserving of the glory that this thing has become. Um, I'm thinking some rear fenders would be nice because it'd be fun to actually like drive this thing to town. And if you hit a puddle, it'd suck to just be like, poof, blasted in the face with water. So yeah, I mean, basically just a few little finishing touches, weld the frame, paint it, reassemble with a fresh engine. And then it's like basically done. We do need to work on front brakes. I think that, um, this is just not gonna be adequate because it's designed to stop a 250 pound dirt bike plus rider. And this is a like probably, oh, we should weigh it too. Um, anyway, this is probably like a thousand pounds plus rider. Uh, so I'll look and see, maybe we can make or get a much larger diameter rotor and then make an adapter for a bigger brake caliper. Probably the last major like fabrication thing that needs to happen is that and some fenders. What do you Side think back. of what we did to your engine? It's crusty now. It's all oily and broken. <laughs> I mean, you gave it to us as a box of parts. I knew this was gonna happen. Exactly. <laughs> you guys, rotaries are delicate, and you guys are not delicate. So <laughs> I was expecting this to happen, but it happened so early. Yeah. And so I think you guys are gonna do something sick with it. Just like 
even more intense, so. It'll just get crazier as time goes yeah, on. I'm, I'm happy to see it blown up.